perhaps our most familiar animal companion. Humankind's relationship with dogs goes back more than 10,000 years. But some things haven't changed. Their desire for food and our desire for love, affection, and obedience. Sit. Sit, good boy. It's a transaction familiar to anyone who's ever trained a dog, including Alice Lau. And it has a name, reinforcement learning. Basically, reinforcement learning, it means we motivate the dogs with things they like to get the desirable behavior. It's the same for humans. Positive rewards for good outcomes leads to lessons learned. Shake hands. Oh, wow. Yes, good girl, good girl. There we go. You're such a beautiful girl. Yeah. Holly, the Alaskan Malamute, was a pro. Shake hands. Wow, yeah, good. good girl. And soon, we were surrounded. Can you sit? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. All right. Yeah, you're being so good. You're being so but not all were such fast so learners. Right sit. Sit. You got this, Mango. You got this, Mango. Sit. <laughs> I'm going to give you a treat. I'm sorry. Now, nothing can compare to these furry faces, but technology is catching up on the natural abilities of our canine friends in more ways than one. Thousands of kilometers away, a different kind of four-legged force is on the move. Meet the Keist Hound 2, the quadruped robot with the 100-meter Guinness World Record. It's over 50 kilos of pure engineering and AI expertise from one of Korea's leading universities. This crack team of students from the university's Dynamic Robot Control and Design Laboratory is led by PhD student Che jong hun Yeah, it's my creation. It's my baby. When we first arrived, the hound looked ready to flex. What's the purpose of the bar? It's for the safety. Uh, it's long so fast. When it fell off, it broke everything. So we're trying to save something. <laughs> so yeah. We add the safety bar. Master student and hound controller Song Taegyu is ready for his workout, which is good because today they're going to try and break their own world record from October 2023. 100 meters in 19.87 seconds. We're nervous. We're going to see if it's going to break another record. I got my timer at the ready. We are ready for the hound. Exciting. Yes, it is nervous. exciting. Ready? Go. We're going to go. Stop. Just under 13 seconds. 12.54. Mm -hmm. Yesterday you had. 12.40. 12.40. My gosh. Not bad. Be proud. Yeah. <laughs> Collapsed. <laughs> but shaving seven seconds off its record time has taken a toll on the hound. Enter the pit crew in charge of repairs, including master student So Yong Rang. Yes, I've been dreaming of building robots since I was young. So being able to work with the world's fastest robot is something I'm incredibly proud of. It's like a dog sprinting or even a cheetah. Are you a dog lover? Actually, I love robots even more than dogs. So I put even more love into the hound. Thanks to their help, the hound recovered and the safety bar came off. Then it was my turn to go head to head with the hound. I haven't run 100 meters since high school. I'm going to get in position. I'm just going to run wild. Look, he's trying to psych me out. Look at this. Hey, psych me out with your typewriter dance. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh my gosh, I was bested by far by a robot. So what's the point of a super fast quadruped robot apart from humiliating humans like me? When the robot cannot achieve the best running, it means we pushed our robot in extreme situation. Jung Hun says the hound could one day help explore disaster sites for survivors at top speed, suggesting this record-breaking achievement may only be a first step for its potential. 
The sun was shining, the geese were waddling, and so we took the hound out for a walk around campus to learn about another kind of technology being developed by Keist's Urban Robotics Lab. The hound has been programmed with a new software called DreamWalk. This enables blind locomotion, meaning the robot can navigate uneven terrain with no camera or LiDAR sensors to see where it's going. Like on the racetrack, it's getting basic instructions like stop and go from a controller, but it has to feel out and adapt to the terrain for each step it takes. This is the accumulation of knowledge and data taken from 4,000 virtual robots learning to walk at the same time. Because they're just learning how to stand up in the beginning. They don't know how to use all their muscles, basically. Remember reinforcement learning? Good girl! It turns out it's the same for robots, but with a different type of treat. Our virtual dogs here, we give the rewards and then penalties uh, some values, and then the robots learn how to maximize those values, how to maximize the rewards. We use all of that experience to train one brain for one robot. And how many years of training does one simulation give one of your robots? It's going to be like 17, 18 years equals of human real world experiences in three hours. There you go. The hound makes blind locomotion look easy, but I'm going to put that to the test. Now, this is an exercise in blind locomotion. I think the direction I need to take is that direction. Yeah, true. All right, so here we go. I have to take small <laughs> little baby steps. I don't want to trip. This is not going to be e There's a tree here. <laughs> this is not going to be easy at all. There's another tree. This feels very disorienting. Oh. <laughs> all yeah, right. You're rich. That was quite a lesson in blind locomotion. Lesson learned, it's not easy. <laughs> like our dream walk allows the like very fast and quick adaptation. Even the required computation time is less than two milliseconds. The team say blind locomotion means the robot can navigate in high risk places with low visibility, like a burning building. Even though it's very dark or smoke, the dog can explore where the human being is. One thing is for certain, in the race to build a better future through technology, this team is on track for breakthroughs.